This girl literally lived a nightmare. A 17-year-old girl was watching TV late at night when her motion detector lights in her driveway suddenly went on. She assumed it was just an animal, so she got up, drew the blinds, and went back to watching TV. Then a little bit later, it happened again. Before she could even react, she looks over and clearly makes out a silhouette of a person right behind the blinds who starts banging aggressively on the window. The girl stands up and goes, I'm gonna call the cops! And the figure stops for just a second, sprints to the side door and starts pounding even louder on that, screaming incoherently. The girl runs to the bathroom, barricades herself inside while she waits for the police, and then her worst nightmares come true. She hears glass shatter in the other room. After a few minutes of silence, she opens her door just a crack to get a peek outside, and standing in her living room next to a broken window is some crazy old woman who looks over at her and starts sprinting toward her. The lady comes smashing into the door and starts wailing on it until the police arrive and take her away. She was a lunatic who had escaped her facility. If you scare easily, swipe on. In 1989, a woman started hearing strange banging sounds in her walls and in the ceiling. And then one night, the crawl space to her attic was open, so she went to go have a look. When she's just feet away, an old man suddenly appears in the crawl space and looks her dead in the eye before vanishing. There was nobody else in the house. Worried no one's going to take her seriously over an apparent ghost in her house, she ends up calling a paranormal investigator. When the paranormal crew arrived, they were actually very skeptical until they heard loud banging in the attic and they decided to go up and have a look. As soon as the two men get up into the attic, one of them screams and suddenly disappears. The other, who didn't have a flashlight, starts using the flash on his camera to illuminate the attic. And he takes one of the most famous pictures in paranormal history. His partner, who was in total shock, had been lifted off the ground and tied to one of the beams. That was the last night the woman ever stayed in the house. However, it's still being rented out today, but nobody stays longer than one or two months. This sounds totally made up until you listen to the police report. In the early 90s, a teenage girl started to see these shadowy figures that would come into a room at night and crawl all around her room and even grab at her legs. At the same time, her health began to rapidly deteriorate, which ultimately led to her death, which doctors never understood. A few days after her death, her sister woke up to a whistling sound and saw a creature crawling around her room with no face. The same night, her mom was ripped out of bed by someone. The father calls the police who come over, they search the house, they don't find anything, it's all quiet. As they're about to leave, they hear something. Horrifying screams coming out of the bedroom. They run inside, no one's in there, but there are these huge gashes on the wall that were not there before. The police get out of there. In the police report that was filed immediately after this house call, the chief inspector and the three officers that were there that night swear they saw and heard the same things as the family, which means the police officially believed that the house was haunted. It's what she finds in the kitchen that's really scary. In the early 90s, a young girl was sleeping in her mom's bed when she suddenly woke up for no reason. She looked at her door and she saw her very affectionate cat kind of meowing down the hall as if someone was coming up to pet it, but she was next to her mom and they were the only ones in the house. The girl shakes her mom awake and points to the cat just as a man is walking past the door and disappears into the room across the hall. Before the man could come back out and find them, they both jump out the window, run across the street and call the police. When the police arrived, the guy is nowhere to be found, but they do discover that the front door was unlocked, so that had to be the way he got in and out. But the mother swears up and down that she locked that door before she went to bed. A week later, the mother's cleaning their kitchen and she opens up the water heater closet where she finds this notebook that inside is their names and pictures of them in it, along with a pair of surgical gloves. Which means someone had snuck in at some point, was living in that closet spying on them, and then walking around their house at night. This is why you should always be afraid of strangers. In 2014, a disturbing text message conversation between two classmates was uploaded to the internet. Annie and David are talking casually and then Annie hears footsteps outside and goes to look. She sees someone standing in her yard and she assumes it's just Dave playing a joke on her, but it's not. Suddenly the stranger starts sprinting towards her house. He smashes through a window and now he's in her house. She freaks out, jumps in a closet and tells Dave to call the police. She tells Dave that he's yelling for her to come out, and then Annie stops texting. When Annie finally writes back that everything's just fine, Dave realizes something. He wasn't talking to Annie anymore. 
The more you think about how this true story ends, the creepier it gets. In 2015, a college student was renting the basement apartment of his friend's house. One weekend, his basement roommates take off for the night, so he decides to use that time to get some homework done distraction free. But as soon as he sits down to do his work, his friend upstairs and his family starts making all this noise, moving furniture around, shuffling feet. It's impossible to focus, so he picks up his phone and he texts his friend. You guys sound like you're really having a good time up there. I'm not really getting anything done. Can I come up? And his buddy says, no one is home. We went to Wisconsin for the weekend. Terrified, he runs out the side door to get a look in the window to see who's making all the noise. All the lights are off in the house. There's not a single car in the driveway. He had been home alone the whole time. The crazy part is most people believe that these three things will actually save your life. They don't. Let's pretend you're at the ATM and this guy comes up behind you with a knife. He demands that you pull out as much money as you can and give it to him. But you remember that if you just punch in your ATM code backwards, it will still give you cash and it will tell the authorities that you're being robbed. Except that's a myth. And all you end up doing is locking your account, making your attacker that much more suspicious of you. And so what does he do? He gets ready to actually attack you. But what do you do? You remember that you're a karate master and so of course you're gonna fight back. And so while you're getting in your stance, he just instantly stabs you. Because disarming someone with a knife is so hard to do, even if you're experienced at it. It's like trying to disarm a child who's got an uncapped marker without getting marker on you. It ain't gonna happen. So now you're stabbed, but you remember, I can just yank this bad boy out and apply pressure and be fine. But that's not true. You bleed to death. When you finish this video, you're gonna Google two words. In 2014, two Dutch college students were staying in Panama when they decided to take their host family's dog out for a walk. The dog returned, but the girls didn't. After 10 weeks without any leads, a local woman turned in a blue backpack that contained the girls' cell phones and their camera. Using their call log, they were able to determine that the girls would attempt to reach emergency services 77 times, all unsuccessful, starting just hours into their trip. It was also determined that five days after those 77 calls, somebody tried unsuccessfully several times to unlock the girls' phones. But the most distressing thing is what was found on the camera. The first set was taken on the day they left and they were totally normal. The second set was taken in the middle of the night over a week after they had left and it showed all their belongings neatly laid out on a rock and it showed one of the girls who appeared to be hurt. They found their remains spread out around the area where the backpack was found and some of their bones appeared to have been bleached. There is still no official cause of death or explanation as to what happened. This is a highly controversial topic. In 2016, a man posted on Facebook that the local police were going to kill him that weekend. That weekend, he died under very suspicious circumstances that we will get to. Immediately following his death, his YouTube page, which contained footage from his home's camera system, went viral. One of his videos shows a large group of police officers standing in front of his house for no apparent reason in the middle of the night. Others show what he claims to be plainclothes police officers casing his property. But the most talked about video is the one where the van shows up in front of his house, revealing a guy with a fairly high-tech camera who just starts filming his house. The man was found dead in his home after it had burned down and he was found to have stab wounds on his back and his stomach. His death was determined to be self-inflicted. However, the debate rages on online. What happened to John Lang? No one would believe this story if there wasn't a video. In 2013, a rogue wave capsized a tugboat killing 11 of 12 men on board. The 12th man was flung into the hallway which was already filled with water. Panicked, he starts swimming towards the exit, but accidentally goes into the engine room where he finds an air pocket. And there this poor man sat, listening to the sounds of these huge sharks fighting over the bodies of his friends just on the other side of the wall. Total darkness, no food or water 100 feet below the surface. Three days later, one of the divers that was sent down there to retrieve their bodies sees a hand. On one, yeah? He's alive, he's alive. He's alive. <laughs> Okay. All right. Harrison O'Keen survived the ordeal and plans on writing a book. This is why you should always breathe through your nose. In 2009, a Russian man named Artyom Sidorkin started experiencing intense chest pains to the point where he couldn't even stand up. He tried to ignore it, but when he started coughing up blood, he went to the emergency room. They gave him an x-ray and it revealed a fist-sized tumor growing in his lung. Afterwards, the doctor told Mr. Sidorkin, unfortunately, it looks like cancer. But before they could start removing large chunks of his lung, the doctor needed to do a biopsy to see if it really was cancer. So a terrified Mr. Sidorkin came in a few days later, they performed the biopsy, and the surgeon, as he was looking at the tissue, noticed something. 
Tucked in the middle of the tissue was a five centimeter long fir tree. Mr. Sidorkin was a botanist and he was a big mouth breather. And at some point while he was working, he managed to inhale a fir tree seed. When the doctors told him he didn't have cancer. He had a tree. He was shocked. And he said, I had no sense that a tree was growing in my lungs. But more than shocked, he was just happy to be cancer free. If you make it to the end, I'm sorry. In 2007, a woman was lying awake in her hotel bed when she started hearing a kid run up and down the hall laughing and making tons of noise. She considered going out and telling the kid to be quiet, but eventually just said whatever and fell asleep. The next morning she got up and asked her teenage daughter who was staying in the room next door if she had heard the kid. And she said, yes, it was so annoying. That night, the woman is back in bed trying to sleep when once again she hears the kid in the hall. Now feeling pretty annoyed herself, she starts walking to the front door to get a better listen when the footsteps stop right in front of her door and she hears the kid playing with the do not disturb sign. She leans into the people to get a better look, but the kid's gone. So she steps into the hallway and looks down. This is why you should be careful what you put in the mail. In 2015, a man was asked by his neighbor to collect his mail while he was gone for a few weeks. A few days later, a large package arrives on his neighbor's front porch. The man can barely lift it, but gets over to his garage where he accidentally drops it and hears something break inside. Hoping his neighbor would think the damage occurred en route, he closes his squeaky garage door and forgets about it. But over the next couple of days, whatever was in that package started to smell so bad that he decides to open it up. Inside were two very important finds, his neighbor, who was dead, and a camera that was still recording. The police bring the man in for questioning and show him what was on the camera inside the box. It starts with his neighbor talking to the camera about how excited he is to mail himself home for his YouTube channel. Then police fast forward to the very end where they see that the neighbor is now sleeping in the box and then suddenly gets dropped and you hear a crack and that's his neck breaking. And then you hear a squeaky garage door close. Did you know that gummy bears actually have a really dark history? So gummy bears were invented in the early 1900s and they were originally called dancing bears. Now in Europe following World War I, dancing bears were quite the attraction. And people didn't see anything wrong with this, which I find crazy. The bears would often be chained, made to wear silly clothing, and usually their teeth would have been completely removed so that they were considered safe for the public. These bears were a very popular attraction at fairs and carnivals in most European cities. And this is literally what gummy bears were based off of. I had no idea they had such a dark history. And obviously later on, they changed it from dancing bears to gummy bears, which is a lot better. And they're definitely not associated with that anymore, but it's definitely sad to know the history. Honestly, no one would believe this story, except it's actually true. In 1961, a B-52 bomber carrying two live nuclear bombs was conducting a very covert airborne alert mission when the pilot got on the radio and told the entire crew to abandon the plane because it was going down. The plane ultimately caught fire and exploded, dropping two live thermonuclear warheads between the towns of Goldsboro and Faro, North Carolina. These bombs are used to crush cities. They're 25 times stronger than the ones we used in Hiroshima. Each bomb has four safety mechanisms before it detonates. On the bomb recovered, three of those safety mechanisms were active, meaning only a single switch kept the bomb from detonating. And the second bomb is still in the swamps of North Carolina. Unless you've heard this story, there's no way you could have guessed what was on that ship. In 2012, an old Russian cruise liner was being towed to the Caribbean to be used for scrap when the tow line snapped. They tried to recover it, but it drifted into international waters and everybody just kind of assumed it would sink. So they said, eh, forget about it. It didn't sink because a year later they got a GPS signal from the unmanned ship showing that it had drifted nearly two thirds of the way across the Atlantic and was now poised to strike the British coastline. At first, British authorities were not concerned with the damage this ship might cause to their coastline until scientists revealed what was on the ship. It was being towed to the Caribbean last year when it came loose during a storm. It's now feared to be infested with cannibal rats on board who, lacking a food source, have turned on each other. Cannibal rats? That's pretty shocking. Did you know that back in the day they used to use spider webs as band-aids? I had no idea this was actually a thing and it definitely blew my mind when I found out. In ancient Greece and Rome, doctors used spider webs as bandages for their patients. Spider webs have natural antiseptic and antifungal properties, which actually helps with cleaning and preventing an infection. It was also said that spider webs are rich in vitamin K, which helps clot blood and close wounds. Could you imagine having like a cut on your leg and the doctor's like, here, put a spider web on it. 
This is what they meant when they said, don't talk to strangers. In the early 1900s, a 10-year-old boy was playing in the woods when a tall man appeared and asked if he wanted to come back to his cabin for dinner. Totally caught off guard, the boy reluctantly agrees and begins walking. When they get to the cabin, the boy is relieved when he sees Paul, a family friend, sitting on the porch, so the boy happily goes inside. After they eat, the boy says thank you to the strange tall man, says bye to Paul, and then he leaves. He had only walked a few steps when he sees his family, along with Paul, running up the path towards him, frantically asking if he was okay. Confused, the boy says, I'm just fine, and he looks at Paul and he's like, why didn't you tell them I was with you at, at the cabin? And he points over his shoulder. Paul glances over the boy's shoulder and then narrows his eyes and says, you were kidnapped by a cult three days ago. No one's seen you. Terrified, the boy turns around to look at the cabin he just came from, and it's gone. All he sees is a dark forest that stretches for miles. This is why you should never explore abandoned ships. In 2014, the U.S. Navy decided to decommission one of its oldest ships, so it brought it into port to be broken down for scrap. Before workers were allowed to actually start breaking it down, the foreman had to go on board and take pictures of every room. So late one night, the foreman spends about an hour walking through this abandoned ship with a flashlight, taking about a hundred pictures. When he was done, he emailed the pictures to his boss, who quickly wrote back, Who's the guy with the axe? The foreman had no idea what he was talking about, but he noticed the boss had attached one of the pictures that he had just sent him. When he opened it, he nearly fainted. There, in the bowels of the ship, poking his head around a corner, was a faceless man wielding an axe. The foreman had spent over an hour in this hallway and never heard or saw this guy. The Navy searched the ship and never found this guy. They also reviewed security footage of the only entrance, and he never entered or left the ship.